وبالإسناد المتصل إلى الإمام الغزالي رحمه الله تعالى ونفعنا به أمين قال أيها الولد أو ماي سان العلم بلا عمل جنون knowledge without practice is madness والعمل بغير علم لا يكون and knowledge and, and practice without knowledge cannot be واعلم أن العلم الذي لا يبعدك اليوم عن المعاصي and you must know that the knowledge which does not keep you away today from sins ولا يحملك على الطاعة and does not push you to obedience لا لن يبعدك غدا عن نار جهنم tomorrow will not keep you away from the fire of hellfire the fire of jahannam وإذا لم تعمل بعلمك اليوم and if you do not put your knowledge into practice today يعني until when you will put these ayahs and, يعني, and hadiths and uh, rulings that you know of into practice Till why, why do you delay it so he's saying today put it into practice today and if you do not <coughs> try to catch up and make up for the past days that you did not put it into practice تقول غدا يوم القيامة. you will be saying tomorrow on the day of resurrection فأرجعنا فأرجعنا yes فأرجعنا ربنا آمنا ربنا أبصرنا وسمعنا فأرجعنا فأرجعنا نعمل صالحا <تصفيق> سبحان الله هذا هير همزة همزة القطع فأرجعنا and this man is توف... توفيق الصب... الصباخ توفيق الصباخ He's Lebanese, but I'm not sure he's a Muslim. Anyway. <coughs> he has a few mistakes like that. فيقال, and it will be said, يا أحمق, oh fool, أنت من هناك تجيء? You are coming from, from there? يعني, Such an argument, you are bringing up the, the argument of the of the kuffar. It's a sad argument to bring up, and if to put for a Muslim who knows better to be put in the position of saying, "Farjana uh, na'mal salihan," you know, bring us back, and uh, we will do we will do a good deed. <laughs> so, in other words, don't don't be like that. Uh, don't be ending up having to make the argument and the request and the plea of the unbelievers who, about whom Allah said, and we know that if they were brought back, they would still do the same thing. They would not do a right deed. So Imam is saying, ah, you from there, you are coming. Ayyuhal walad, ij'al al-himmata fi ruh Oh, put your high energy into the spirit, O oh my son. وَالْهَزِيمَةَ فِي النَّفْسِ And the uh, defeat, Hazima is like complete defeat of the enemy. Hazima, huzimu, يعني, they were routed. They were routed, يعني, shattered, shattered to pieces and sent in all directions, running away. That's Hazima. So put, make that into the, the nafs and keep your high energy into your ruh. In other words, oh my son, keep your sleepiness out of the activities where your ruh is supposed to be present. Save the sleep for the time of sleep and the time of night. And you don't come to prayer and you are like, mm, like that. Because it's like coming also to class and you are sleepy. No, those moments are rare and few in life where you are 
there to learn or you are there to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prayer and you are reading his book and so forth and there is plenty of time later for the sleep and the pleasure of the nafs and the sleep of the grave and so do not saying the time of your himma your himma is high energy of course there is himma to dunya also like I always mention the you know when we were in Long Island and it was winter and we were going to Salat al-Fajr and uh, you know defrosting the windshields and just driving off to the mosque and at the main uh, turn towards the mosque on the main road right facing me I would see a very highly lit space with people doing lots of movement and, and that was the gym with all of the people before going into the city doing their morning routine at the gym on treadmills on weight machines on this and that on on, on uh, standing bicycles and so forth and i would always say to myself subhanallah if only we had such himma for uh, you know for uh, deen not just for our bodies and dunya and to be you know in the best uh, fit shape and so forth to be more productive for dunya and it's good to to keep fit so that you can serve others better but if it is only for just you know just to live longer for more pleasure and just to be able to work harder for more money and so forth so that's himmat dunya so that is low himma the shuyukh they defined that as al himmat al dani'a or dunu dunu wil himma dunu wil himma yani himma for low things and then ulu wil himma and himma aliya yani high himma is himma for spiritual things spiritual things so if those people were looking for spiritual enlightenment even through yoga it would be better because at least they are something spiritual is pulling them and inshallah if Allah puts tawfiq in that they will end up you know in the deen and Allah Islam like that so will himma it is important to uh, to keep our himma high for the highest things. This he says, keep al hazima fi nafs, yani that defeat defeatism, put it in the in the nafs, the ego. Let the ego feel defeated. Wal mauta fil badan, and the death in the body. And if it comes to that, it is better for your soul to be rich healthy and happy than for just the body and nothing else he says reserve the bo- the, uh, the death for the body do not reserve it for the soul let's see it's not saying you know kill yourself no you see the difference is uh, I mean, you know that uh, what you have uh, what your resources are and they are not just your body they are your soul and the soul has priority not vice versa because your ultimate uh, home is the grave. وأهل المقابر ينتظرونك في كل لحظة متى تصل إليهم. الله أكبر. And the people of the graves are waiting for you in every moment. When are you going to uh, catch up with them and reach them? Subhanallah wa bihamdi. And only last week, Sheikh Abdul Ghani was out and about discussing, talking, and seeing others, sharing a meal, giving a class, and so forth. And only the week, uh, two, two weeks ago. And then one week ago, passed away. Subhanallah. It was, took everyone by surprise, and uh, this, this comes to us, this re- reading and teaching, to remind us, subhanallah. حق الموت حق ربنا توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين آمين إياك إياك beware beware أن تصل إليهم بلا زاد to arrive there without provision قال أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه he said may Allah be well pleased with him هذه الأجساد 
قفص الطيور أو استبل الدواب These bodies are the cages of birds or the stables of uh, dumb beasts فتفكر في نفسك من أيها من أيهما and so think tell ask yourself which one are you See the so the cage bird is a figure for the soul waiting to be liberated from the trappings of dunya and body. Fly to its reality. And the uh, stable of the beasts are the ones that are looking down happy with their fodder. Give me more hay and I'll be fine. More hay and I'll be fine. They are not thinking of, you know. So in this respect, yani that's the image here. It doesn't mean that in other expressions it is not the reverse, that the, the good values are represented by, for example, the after the cow had been worshipped, it never, it felt so much shame that human beings had worshipped it that it never raised its head again. That is in praise of the cow, why it's always looking down. And also the example of the dog that in the Holy Quran it is uh, a negative example. In Hamalta alayhi yalhath wa interaktahu yalhath. No matter what, it is always yani, uh, panting. Uh, it, is, it has no understanding. But the dog of the people of the cave is praised because it's keeping company with the Salihin and uh, guarding them and uh, because out of love you're out of love so he'll end up in paradise with them so depending on context there's a book on uh, on the dogs uh, by Ibn al-Marzuban which is very moralistic and shows also that the dogs are so, uh, have plenty of good qualities also and self-sacrifice and so forth so it depends on context so which one are you? He says, In kunta min al-tuyuri al If you are of the high most, you see, ulwi, yani supernal, the, 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 the birds that are, that love the heights in the sky. Fahina tasma'u tanina tabl, irji'i ila rabbiki, tatiru sa'idan ila an taq'uda fi a'ali buruj al-jinan. So at the time that you hear the uh, the drum, the sound of the drum that says, Come back to your nurturing Lord. You will be flying, climbing up until you sit in the highmost regions of the towers of paradise. May Allah grant us that. I mean, Kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ihtazza arshul lahman min mawti Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, the uh, throne of the all merciful shook from the death of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. Yani, so he is interpreting this shaking as caused by the joining up of the soul of the righteous one to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the eagerness of happiness of joining up to the divine presence the throne even shook from that from the arrival of the soul of Mu'adh Ibn Jabal and Prophet Sallallahu announced it like that this is how this is how you see uh, the Imams of uh, Muslims interpret such a hadith not to say that uh, Allah was so sad that he moved on the throne and he moved the throne on which he sits and, like, and all of these uh, anthropomorphist uh, and inappropriate interpretations. See, this is also plenty of Ash'ari teaching here folded into the, the text uh, that is really about the joy of the soul joining paradise at, at, as we should see, as, as we should be, you know, not to be sad at leaving this dunya.
وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتَ مِنَ الدَّوَابِ And we seek refuge in Allah from you being from part of the dumb, dumb beasts. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلُ Those ones, the unbelievers, are like the, uh, the cattle or rather they are more misguided. They are more astray. فَلَا تَأْمَنْ انْتِقَالَكَ مِنْ زَاوِيَةِ الدَّارِ إِلَى هَاوِيَةِ النَّارِ So uh, do not be so sure. That you would not be, you know, transported from some corner of the house to some abyss of hellfire. Ayyadu billah. Wa amin tum man fi sama. Are you so sure that the one in the sky is not going to going to rain on you? Yaxifa bikum al ard that he's not going to shake. I mean, the angel is not going to shake the earth beneath your feet, and so on and so forth. So, that man. Be, feel feel overly sure and then the direct object intiqalaka yani that you are going to be moved from here to there so do not be so sure that you are not going to be moved that's what it really means even though the the, the negative particle is not mentioned it is understood from ta'man feel sure that it's not going to happen وروي أن الحسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى أعطي شربة ماء بارد It was narrated that الحسن البصري Allah have mercy on him was given a drink of cold water فأخذ القدح وغشي عليه وسقط من يده He took the, the cup and he lost consciousness and he dropped from his hand فلما أفاق قيل ما لك يا أبا سعيد and when he came to, he was asked, what happened to you, Abu Sa'id? قال, ذكرت أمنية أهل النار حين يقولون لأهل الجنة I remember the request and repeated request of the so Omnia and Omnia also is recitation and you recite poetry or some or something else of the people of hellfire at the time that they say to the people of paradise an afidu alayna min al ma'i aw min ma razaqakum allah that pour over us from the water or from whatever allah provided you remember that and this is part of uh, <coughs> what you might call the impressibility of the Salaf, with, with their transparent hearts, how they would feel, not double or triple, but 500 times, 10,000 times what we feel, because they were less distracted by uh, the sights and sounds of dunya all around them. And so, and they would say, you know, heart, uh, rending things and they would weep easily and they would faint easily and and they uh, were the staunchest of people also physically and they would endure much more than us but at the same time you know I mean Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab is related as having uh, two streaks of two streaks caused into the grime and dust of his face by tears he would, he would uh, routinely be crying, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. And uh, so when we hear stories of some of the Sahib Salih fainting or even dying at uh, the sound of uh, a verse of Quran or a sound of poetry that reminded them of the verse of Quran, just like the poetry of the lover uh, recited, in uh, the book of music, of uh, he, where he mentions that a uh, young man who was part of a group of people died because he was uh, he was thinking of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at the time. So um, that impressibility of the Salaf, I have a text with that title that I, I put together different examples and uh, examples that I took also from. Uh, at-Tibyan fi adab hamalati al-Qur'an of Imam al-Nawawi 
in the chapter where he mentions examples of deeply affected incidents of Salaf Salih at the recitation of Quran, where some people uh, died, you know, uh, you know, and uh, so Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud also one time fainted uh, on hearing a certain verse and so forth. So this, the uh, companions, uh, Tabi'een, and should not be asked, you know, that uh, or uh, or claimed that it did not exist. Unfortunately, you know, even uh, big uh, memorizers, people with phenomenal memory, uh, like uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmad ibn Taymiyyah, uh, in his essay as Sufiya to Al Fuqara, the Sufis and the Fuqara, where he he claimed that, uh, you know, I mean, these, these displays of emotions, the Salaf al-Salih did, uh, did not have that. They did not. did not faint. And so, so I'm really surprised that he did that, that his, his, uh, his impulse to try to put down the Sufis, refute them, etc., pushed him to ignore a thing that uh, such as his caliber should have known, you know, that, uh, yes, they did. Uh, lots of examples, subhanAllah, how could you say that? I was surprised that he uh, that he said that. But, you know, he was... On the one hand, he was very pro-Sufi because he... He said that when he was younger, he was an assiduous reader of Ibn Arabi. Imagine. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, he would read his books. So, there must be some kind of self-hating also reaction in later life when he left that. Like uh, Muhammad Rashid Rida, the student of uh, Muhammad Abdu in Egypt. He was an Akshabandi. And then he ended up a complete anti-Sufi. He was an Akshabandi when he was in Lebanon, in Tripoli, his father and so forth. Then he went to Egypt and he became a Salafi. And he became more Salafi than Muhammad Abdu. Muhammad Abdu was more Sufi than him. So... So some kind of uh, hatred of the past that he had, and so that he projected that. And, uh, and uh, on the other hand, also he, uh, he was proud that he was a Qadiri through Hanbali shuyukhs. It was Shah Abdul Qadir Jilani being Hanbali, of course. So he said, you know, and I took the best tariqa, which is the tariqa of Shah Abdul Qadir, from... Uh, uh, so and so Ibn Qudama from Wafaq al-Din Ibn Qudama from so and so from Sheikh Abdul Qadir. Uh, he was proud of that. He mentioned that and it was mentioned by Ibn Abdul Hadi, his staunch defender uh, in uh, an epistle on uh, Tasawwuf. Wahhabis and Salafis deny that. But I mean, they, uh, they are admirers of Ibn Abdul Hadi because he was a staunch defender of Ibn Taymiyyah, and they are admirers of Ibn Taymiyyah, so there's no way for them to deny it. It's, it's right there in the book of Ibn Abdul Hadi with his chain of transmission, mentioning uh, Ibn Taymiyyah's chain of transmission. So he was uh, Qadiri Sufi, but at the same time anti-Sufi. So anyway, all this to say that yeah, they were very impressible, and they, and they had certain incidents like that, and... And the fact that uh, the Prophet ﷺ made them, you know, strong and carry like mountains still, they were also, you know. So uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he saw the, when he saw the Ash'aris, uh, the Ash'aris from Yemen, uh, given to weeping, he said, Hakada kunna. Uh, he said, that's how we were at f before. And then our hearts hardened. So Sha'rani says, uh, this means that our hearts became staunch in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that they hardened in the way of the hardening of the hearts of the people of dunya, no. So in other words, that they would, would weep, but it would, uh, it was something that they were no longer conscious conscious of that. They were no longer conscious of that. So, yeah. Subhanallah.
So when we are conscious of it, there is still a mark, a certain uh, sort of self-display, or because uh, if we become conscious of it, then we, would, we should immediately stop it. Wallahu a'lam. Alhamdulillah.